Hi everyone, welcome back to Fleming College. I'll be joining you this semester for the Forestry College and Silvics course. I'm pretty excited to be there with you. It's a fun course to be in. Forestry College is something I find a very interesting subject. Lots of uh, interesting things to learn as far as how trees interact with one another and why a forest grows the way it does. It also gives us a basis in the urban forestry course and the urban forestry field to understand different reactions of trees and why they grow the certain ways they do. So uh, lots of fun things we'll learn about this semester. Today this little talk is just to give you an overview a little bit as far as um, what exactly forest ecology is and what exactly Silvix is. So the course name forest ecology and Silvix, we might look at that name and just say yes we, we've heard of ecology before, we obviously know what a forest is, but what exactly does that mean when we put that word, those words together? And then Silvix, Silvix is a word every time you type it, Microsoft word underlines it saying they don't know what it is so we need to little, have a little better understanding I think of what exactly forest ecology and Silvix is before we get this course started so that's where we're going to start today And so what is forest ecology? Well, ecology is humans' attempt to understand the interactions of living organisms with one another within an abiotic environment. Forest ecology is the basis of understanding any interaction with a tree, no matter its location, whether it is in the middle of a forested environment or in the middle of an urban environment. To understand forest ecology, it helps us better understand scientific features such as natural target pruning, species interactions, appropriate growing conditions for the trees, and essentially on a larger scale, the life history of a forest and overall forest health. In this course, the concept of forest ecology will be interpreted as a natural process within a forest without the interference of human activity. In Southern Ontario, we are aware that human interference can be categorized as a disturbance, not unlike natural disturbances such as wind, fire, or flooding. However, the complexities of human disturbance are so great through alien species, certain land use practices, and historically and even today, high grading of timber and of good quality trees, that the extent of the effects we have on forest ecology may not ever be fully understood because of what we have lost already in the past. Okay, to begin, I will reiterate that ecology is humanity's attempt to better understand interactions of living and non-living organisms. In this course, we will concentrate on the theory that a forest survives by competition um, within, with each individual. Okay, as this is only one attempt to understand uh, ecology, we will not ignore other theories and concepts that exist because chances are when you get out into the bush and out into the field, you will find other literature and other people's opinions of ways ecology exists. So we will look at some of those other options as well. Okay, thank you. Such other theories may be that the forest lives and acts as a mutualistic superorganism that is totally connected from one plant and species to the next uh, where one thing influences the other and they all work together to live as a giant organism. It's an attempt to understand the ecology and we will certainly look into some of these theories later on this semester but there's a whole lot more to it that we need to dive into this semester. Another concept I will mention now, but we'll spend less time discussing in class, is forest successions. Like I mentioned earlier, in some texts and papers you will find that ages of, in class of forests are referred to as successions or stages of forests. The successions include pioneer, early, late, and climax successions. 
we'll spend some time talking about that, but yeah, we'll stick around because there's a lot to talk about as far as the different theories of competition of horse succession and mutualism, and I want to spend some time this semester going over that just so you have a little better idea as far as some of the terminology and how that interacts and what that means for the forest. So in the theory, theory of forest succession, there is always a disturbance in which the forest is interrupted from its natural cycle. It could be winds, um, hurricanes, ice storms, but in the most severe and most dramatic fashion it is wildfire. After a fire, the entire landscape might have lost all of its vegetation or some s surviving trees may have lived and may have provided a seed source. But in any event, keep in mind to the top right corner of this screen, you'll see the years of the timeline go by as this forest regenerates after the disturbance. New vegetation takes place, starts to grow, and replenish the, the burnt soil. Uh, pioneer species are the first species to uh, cover the site again in trees and these pioneer species typically are shade intolerant species meaning they need full sunlight to grow and hence why the importance of a fire here otherwise these species would never grow because of the amount of shade in a forest. As these intolerant species grow they continue to gain in size. The canopy is all the same level because the trees are even aged and continue to grow at the same size until they move along from early succession to later succession going from pioneer species early succession later succession there starts to be more openings in the canopy and the openings allow for younger species and more shade tolerant species to establish and start to grow and fill up the intermediate and sub canopies years later 800 years to the next disturbance the pioneer species all but disappear or maybe they do completely disappear because Generally, they're short-lived trees, and the more tolerant species take over the longer-lived species of trees until the following disturbance takes place. If there is no disturbance that, disturbance that takes place, there is a possibility that this forest could move to a climax state. Secondly, what is silvix? The second part of forest ecology in silvix is that word. And let's just make sure we understand what that is also. Silvix is the characteristics of an individual tree species. It encompasses a biography of every individual species, so to speak. Silvix is information in regards to germination, the type of seed bed that the tree requires to grow, how it is able to compete within a forested environment. It provides information as far as soil requirements, moisture requirements, and sunlight requirements. In other words, what the tree needs in order for growth. And also, Silvix is understanding the flowering patterns of the trees, the seed production and dormancy requirements, stratification requirements, and the major pests that may influence or affect the trees as they grow. To another extent, it also looks at the tolerance the trees have of different environmental factors such as cold or hardiness. Knowing silvex helps us better understand and manage silviculture, which is the management of forests through how trees grow and react to one another and to disturbances within the forest. Okay, to put this all together now, forest ecology is the study of growth and interaction of flora and fauna within a treed or forested region. The synecology is how a network of plants and animals grow within a community. Silvix is the autocology, which is the biological relationship between an organism and its surrounding community.
So in other words, what we are going to learn in this course is essentially how a, grow, a tree grows and responds based upon its forested surroundings and into the larger picture, how the forest grows and responds based upon its species, age, climate, disturbances in its surrounding environment.